545. For Monday, April 17th, 2023, Finance and Purchasing Committee. Roll call, please. Alderman Rivera. Present. Alderman Florian. Present. Alderman Hayes. Present. Alderman Moisio. Alderman Newsom. Present. We have a quorum. Item C, approval of the minutes. Can I get a motion to approve the minutes from March 20th, 2023? I'll motion. Motion by Alderman Rivera, second. Seconded. Second by Alderman Hayes. Are there any questions? Um, do, because I abstained in one of these, do I have to not vote in this to approve the minutes? Because you abstained in? In one of the things we voted on that day. No, you're just, uh, when you vote on the minutes, you're just voting to say that that is an accurate reflection. Okay, well, they were corrected, the by the way, because it didn't yeah. say that I had abstained. So right, they okay. They were corrected. Yes, so your abstention has been noted in the minutes, and you can vote on the okay, minutes themselves. Okay, thank you for that clarification. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion carried. Item D, public comment. Is there anyone in the audience that wants to speak on an agenda item? Hearing none, we'll go to item two, new business. Item A, resolution authorizing the procurement of IT professional services from SureTech staffing during fiscal year 2023-2024 in an amount not to exceed $200,000. The IT director is requesting spending authority to bring on additional contractors to assist with building PCs, assist with the police department's new world system cybersecurity, network support, and various other IT responsibilities. The anticipated amount should not exceed $200,000. And staff recommends the Finance and Purchasing Committee authorize the mayor to approve a resolution authorizing the procurement of IT professional services from SureTech staffing in an amount not to exceed $200,000. Can I get a motion on the floor? A motion. Second. Motion by Alderman Rivera, second by Alderman Florian. Are there any questions to this motion? Roll call, please. Alderman Rivera? Aye. Alderman Florian? Aye. Alderman Hayes? Aye. Alderman Newsom? Aye. Motion carried. Yeah. Item B, resolution approving the sole source purchase of Motorola Communications P-2588PX next XE Solution Radio Devices from Motorola S Solutions, Inc. And the amount of $2,906,849.90. The Walking and Police Department and the Walking and Fire Department have joined together and are seeking approval for the purchase of 230 Motorola P-25 Apex Next XE Solution Portable Radio Devices for Emergency communications use. The current radios are either beyond their useful life or no longer serviceable or within one year of becoming obsolete. Without the new radios, the police and fire departments will be unable to attend to emergency calls. This purchase will come directly from Motorola and cover a lifespan of 10 years. The total amount of funding will be $2,906,849.90. First year financing of $850,169.98 will come from the American Rescue Plan Act Fund, ARPA, and the remaining years will be funded through the capital fund. Can I get a motion on the floor? A motion. Motion by Alderman Rivera. Second. Second, Second by Alderman Florian. Are there any questions to this motion? How I guess it's hard to believe any technology lasts 10 years nowadays, but you're saying they're gonna be able to use these for 10 years. That's where? Um, yes. Okay. Motorola had uh, <coughs> designed these and they say they will last for 10 years. Okay, I probably won't be up here then, but I'm gonna try to pay attention and see in 10 years <laughs> if they still have them. <laughs> Thank you. Any other questions? Roll call, please. Alderman Rivera. Aye. Alderman Florian. Aye. Alderman Hayes. Aye. Alderman Newsom. Aye. Motion carried. Item C, resolution authorizing the purchase of office furniture 
for risk management department and the city clerk's office from rework LLC in amount not to exceed $27,250. The risk management department is requesting approval from city council to purchase new ergonomic desks for the new risk management office and the city clerk's cubicle stations. The risk management office will be relocated to the second floor to the space that hosts Corporation Council. Currently there is only one desk in the space which is over 20 years old. With two staff members in the open area of the office, the risk management team is requesting for two ergonomic workstations to complement the area and accommodate the staff members. The ergonomics desk, uh, design of the desk will offer sit and stand options. The desk units will include wall-mounted storage space above one side of the desk. Clerk Kip Kelly requested for new cubicles for her staff which include desk and chairs with ergonomic features. The new cubicles will have a sit and stand portion to the desk. The cubicles will be three feet shorter to allow for proper ADA access into the clerk's office. Can I get a motion? I'll motion. Motion by Alderman Rivera. I'll second. Second by Alderman Florian. Are any questions to this motion? Roll call, please. Alderman Rivera. Aye. Alderman Florian. Aye. Alderman Hayes. Aye. Alderman Newsom. Aye. Motion carried. Item D, resolution approving an agreement with Park Creation Inc. for the design, engineering, and fabrication of a multi canopy shade sail structure for the Waukegan Beach in an amount not to exceed $38,833. The city has been working closely with Park Creation on this component of the CDBG ADA accessible patio and ramp project. The city strives to create a welcoming environment at the lakefront for visitors of all ages and abilities. Access, access to shade is difficult for the mobility impaired visitors for whom this patio has been designed. The shade sales will be a notable amenity Reminis reminiscent of the Stein, um, excuse me, Steiner Pavilion. The lakefront coordinator solicited proposals from two different firms and determined that Park Creation Inc. submitted the lowest bid in the amount of $38,833. Um, and the other, um, can I get a motion on the floor? I'll motion. Motion Second. by Alderman Rivera, second by Alderman Hayes. Are there any questions to this motion? Being none, we'll call, please. Alderman Rivera. Aye. Alderman Florian. Aye. Alderman Hayes. Aye. Alderman Newsom. Aye. Motion carried. Item E, resolution approving a contract with Hacienda Landscaping, Inc. for the installation of concrete caissons to anchor and support the multi-canopy uh, multi shade sail structure for the Waukegan Beach in a total amount of $44,500. During the concrete phase of the project, Raybeam Paving submitted a change order for the caissons for $64,667, which the city rejected and decided to bid. The city published a notice for bid bids on November 28, 2022 due December 20th, 22, 2022, and received zero submissions. Deegan went back to shade sale vendor Park Creation for recommendations for contractors and actively continued the pursuit to find qualified contractors. Design, uh, Deegan uh, was able to solicit two additional bids for the work and after extensive interview with the lowest bidder, Hacienda, Landscaping has been recommended for acceptance by the city. The bids are included uh, below. Uh, can I get a motion on the I'll floor? Motion. Alderman Rivera. Second. Second by Alderman Florian. Are there any questions to this motion? Roll call, please. Alderman Rivera. Aye. Alderman Florian. Aye. Alderman Hayes. Aye. Alderman Newsom. Aye. Motion carried. Item F, resolution approving and accepting a grant from the Illinois Department of Natural Resources Coastal Management Program 
to procure and distribute rescue equipment amongst lakefront communities. Uh, I think we voted on this at the last um, finance committee uh, to go for that grant. Uh, this grant is 100% funded by IDNR for the purchase of life ring cabinets to be installed along the shoreline of Lake Michigan. The city will be sharing the awarded cabinets with four other municipalities included in the grant application. The Lake Michigan Rescue Equipment Act goes into effect on June 2nd, 2023. The act is a crucial step toward addressing recent, recent drownings in Lake Michigan and preventing future accidents by requiring public rescue equipment on all piers or drop off points on Lake Michigan. Um, the city of Waukegan will be getting 17 of these and the other communities, Highland Park will get seven, Glencoe will get three, Lake Forest will get 17 and Lake Bluff will get five. Can I get a motion on the floor? I'll motion. Second. Motion by Alderman Rivera, second by Alderman Hayes. Are there any questions? We have a plan, I'm assuming, of how to distribute them and who's going to install them and all of the that. The 17 for Waukegan, do you know? Um, Lisa May. I mean, that seems like a lot, even though we have a mile shore. <coughs> Thank you for your question. Um, we're sharing some with the Port Authority. We'll have some in reserve for damage. And then we've identified they have some specifications in the bill for how far apart they should be. So they'll be along, we have a lot of harbors. So like even places where public isn't necessarily supposed to go, like where Gillen and Michaels and Larson Marine, they're gonna be installed any drop off into the lake. So okay. we'll have some and we'll have some in reserve for uh, any damages that might happen. And is it, I mean, I remember the day when you used to have to break the glass to get to the fire alarm. I mean, it's something they'll just be able to grab. And yeah. The, um, the municipalities, the city of Chicago ordered from the same distributor, it's Glaston, they're well known as the top maker of these, they're easy to use. Okay, and what about um, people who just decide they're gonna take them, throw them in the water when no one's in the water? I mean, how, does that happen a lot? I, I um, we had a call with the city of Chicago that um, Thomas in our office arranged and they have certain locations where they are constantly replacing it, but it's legislation that was brought down by the state and we have to comply, so. Right. Well, it's a great, I mean, I'm not trying to say we shouldn't do it. But yeah, but we'll do our best to keep up with it. Yeah, no. okay. All right, thanks, Lisa. Yep. Any more questions? Roll call, please. Alderman Rivera. Aye. Alderman Florian. Aye. Alderman Hayes. Aye. Alderman Newsom. Aye, motion carried. Item G, ordinance amending chapter 24, article four, regarding water and sewer service rates and charges in the city of Waukegan. The current ordinance regulating water and sewer rates for residential, commercial, industrial, and other users of the services of the utility includes a rate schedule set to expire after five years on April 30th, 2023. It is hereby proposed that the city of Waukegan establish a new five-year rate schedule effective May 1st, 2023 through May 1st, 2027 that includes an annual 6% rate increase necessary for funding ongoing operations of water, sewer, utility, continuation of required improvements to the physical plant, water and sewer main replacements and extensions and state mandate of the citywide lead pipe removal. Can I get a motion on the floor? I'll motion. I'll second. A motion by Alderman Rivera. Second by Alderman Florian. Isn't, isn't that a federal mandate, not a state mandate? Did you just say? For the lead? Yeah. Did you say it was state in the? Oh, they got state on here, mandate. It's That's federal, federal isn't mandate. It? Yeah, that we have to replace the lead. No, it's the, the, the timing specifically is a state mandate from- Oh, yeah. okay. the time now? The, the, time, the timing that we have to comply oh, with okay. is to Eastern. remove lead pipe, pipes is based on a state mandate oh. that came from Springfield. Okay, oh, um, I didn't realize that. And that part of the reason for that is because Illinois was one of the last states to actually change its plumbing codes. And oh. so we're kind of playing catch up compared to other companies or other states that either change their codes 
earlier or had the majority of their development come um, more recently? Okay, thank you for that clarification. Uh, I'll add to pursuant to the presentation of the city engineering consultants, we can expect 3% of the rate increase to be devoted to the unfunded mandate of the lead pipe removal uh, in fiscal year 2022. Water and sewer sales generated 15 million, and with this rate, it will generate another $900,000. Um, roll call, please. Alderman Rivera? Aye. Alderman Florian? Aye. Alderman Hayes? Aye. Alderman Newsom? Aye. Motion carried. Reports and communications. Um, we have in our packet, did you want to go over those? Uh, what time is it? Oh. I think we all have our, uh, yeah, so uh, six o'clock. We have our uh, reports and communications. Does anyone have any questions regarding those? Um, are you talking about just the ones on the, on the summary or the reports in general? The reports that we got from uh, finance. You didn't have any? I don't have any on this, but I do have on the, the um, food and beverage. Oh, the food, food and beverage. You want to ask your question? You can ask, you can ask the question. I'm trying, to, uh, my pad here won't download the report, but I know I looked at it. Um, I know this is a can of worms because of the problems we have with, with the audit that we did, but we still have some businesses that are, I mean, there's one business that's paid a dollar a month. You know that <laughs> that's they're just paying something, but they're not. I mean, how can it be exactly a dollar every single month? Um, and it's some of them are the same ones we've had problems with before. Um, I don't know. I don't know what the answer is, but I think that we still need to stay on top of it. Oh, you got it to download. Yeah. This, um, I obviously we can't discuss the exact. You know, but there's some of these. One paid six dollars in October and nothing else the whole rest of the year. Um, I, I I don't know. I don't know what the answer is, but I think we we need to figure out something that. It, are, I know they're about to renew their licenses, correct, Don? Yes, that's correct. And so, if they're not up to date, are they allowed to renew? She. If they don't, if they don't, uh, if they are not up to date with their food and beverage collection, are they allowed to renew their business license? So that's one of the ordinances that we still need to work on to where we can mimic it like um, the liquor is, where if you're not up to date, you can't renew. Okay. So that's another ordinance that we're working on. So, so we don't have that currently? Not currently, no. So what's the, <coughs> we do send what's notices. the incentive for somebody to pay? I mean, we do send notices that they have to, like they're behind or if they haven't paid. Um, they do have to send us in a form that agrees with the state, and we do verify that. Otherwise, there's no other way for us to double check to make sure it's accurate. But then they can just continue doing mm -hmm. the same thing they've been doing. That's really sad. <laughs> really sad. Because how, how is that fair to the ones who pay? I mean, why would you bother paying? <laughs> I mean, I think if we get the ordinance updated to where then they have to give us accurate records. And I have to say again, like I always say when we talk about this, this is our money they're collecting on mm -hmm. our behalf. Right. This is not their money. It's not a tax on the business. It's a tax they collect from their customers and are supposed to remit to us. It's right. that simple. So when they keep it, to me, that's tax fraud. I mean, you've collected a tax that belongs to the city of Waukegan and you've kept it. I mean, we do have time because business renewals aren't up until the end of the year. So we do have time to get that ordinance updated. Oh, I thought it was. Well, no, April is liquor. Oh, just liquor. Just liquor. But some of these are from. I yeah, mean, if they have a liquor beverage. license, then they have to make sure that we can make sure they're up to date before we give them the license. Okay. All right, thank you. I know you hate coming up here. I apologize. Is there, is there a way to fast track working on that? 
Uh, we can, that we'll, piece work of the we'll work with legal. We'll work with legal. Where's that at, Stu? We, can, we, we haven't given it to them yet. Oh. We had, we have to we do had that now. outside company that was going after these, and, and then we had to. Yeah. Disaster. Disaster. So now we don't have a way of tracking it. Although I will say some of those people that were behind when we started that now seem to keep up. Yeah. I will say that. But then we have some others that are yeah. and just. Are all these businesses active? Yes. All of them. <coughs> Even though some of them haven't paid anything in a year. Their business license is active, yes. Okay. As so we December don't know 30. if they're going to apply for a new one. Right. Well, they would have to every year if they want to be in business. Well, right. But I mean, if they went out of business and we don't know about it, you won't know until they just don't come and apply for another license. Well, we do have the license and zoning officer who does go around and check. Right. And let, lets us know. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. If there are no more questions, can I get a motion to adjourn? I'll motion. Second. Motion by Alderman Rivera, second by Alderman Florian to adjourn at 6.06 p.m. All those in favor? Aye. Aye.